Hey guys, so this is the launch of the first Wisecrack Pilot for 2018. We've got a couple of them in the works. We've been working really hard on them, but most importantly, we wanna know what you guys think. So let us know what you think in the comments and enjoy the show. Sometimes it's the details of a film that matter most, like a single shot, a needle drop, I see a little silhouette, a line of dialogue, is looking at you, kid, a sudden cut, what seem like insignificant choices often say more in under 20 seconds than other films say in two hours. In this new format, we'll be studying these seemingly trivial pieces, revealing how even the smallest elements can bring layers of meaning to a piece of art. Welcome to Wisecrack's The Film Tourist, The Wolf of Wall Street. Sell me this pen. Sell me this pen. The closing shot of The Wolf of Wall Street. This pen works and I Just a simple push in and crane up. Well, what if I told you this shot changes the meaning of the entire film? This pen works and I personally love As a client describes the pen, his voice drowns out and solemn music kicks in. Up to this point, the film has utilized poppy, upbeat hits to underscore the debauchery. The amnesia phase. So why the sudden shift to something more serious and meditative? For most of its three-hour runtime, The Wolf of Wall Street revels in Jordan Belfort's excess. His yacht, his women, his drugs, his parties. The lifestyle paid for by defrauding investors. That is, until the FBI circles in, seizing Belfort's cash and sending him away to prison for four years. But unlike similar films where the corrupt Wall Street broker gets locked up and justice is served, The Wolf of Wall Street is absent any overt moralizing. Belfort's prison time is a cakewalk, and he doesn't even serve his full sentence. In the end, nothing has changed. Belfort is still selling, and the people, well, they're still buying. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. The final shot can be interpreted in a number of ways, but here are our three favorites. One, the final shot holds up a mirror to us, the moviegoers viewing the film. Notice there's a backlight behind the seminar that evokes a projector shining on the back of an audience. So what does this mean? Well, it may be easy to lay the blame solely on Jordan for all the moral depravity in The Wolf of Wall Street. Jordan! Listen, Jordan! 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 You! But perhaps the final shot lays the blame not only on Belfort, but on us and the culture that allows and encourages his behavior. Might divorce me, but yeah, let's do it. Early on, Belfort says, Every person you're on the phone with, they want to get rich and they want to get rich quickly. They all want something for nothing. They're we may feel dignified because we're not crawling on the ground f***ed up on quaaludes, but truth is, Jordan's scam wouldn't work if we didn't share his dream of getting rich quickly, wanting something or nothing. We all want to be just like him. Scorsese is essentially calling us out. We've just spent three hours partying with Jordan, laughing and reveling in his exploits. It's no wonder Jordan doesn't suffer any punishment in the end, because after all, we revel in everything he does, living vicariously through him, wishing that we could live his life. Two, do all these people staring intently at one person hanging on his every word remind you of something? Yeah, we're gonna go there. Scorsese, a devout Catholic, has spent much of his career exploring faith in his films. Yet in The Wolf of Wall Street, characters worship at the altar of something else. Money. The camera holds on these people, each one in focus so we can see their painfully average faces. Desperate, plain-looking people looking for meaning, desiring that which can elevate them above their mundane existence. Is Scorsese cynically likening the transformative power of faith to the transformative power of money? Except the Almighty never promised a million bucks in eight easy steps. Three. What if, by solemnly portraying a crowd that worships Jordan despite his detestable actions, Scorsese suggests something really sinister, that we actually like being taken advantage oh, of? Oh, you're gonna play 
rough, huh? French philosopher Jean-Francois Lyotard famously said as much. The English unemployed did not become workers to survive, they enjoyed the hysterical, masochistic, whatever exhaustion it was hanging on in the mines, in the foundries, in the factories, in hell. They enjoyed it. Oh, Jesus Christ! Enjoyed the mad destruction of their organic bodies. I like it. I like it. The decomposition of their personal identity. You are lower than pond scum. Enjoyed the dissolution of their families and villages, and enjoyed the new monstrous anonymity of the suburbs and the pubs in the morning and evening. So could this closing image indicate the voluntary submission of the masses, who not only don't mind white collar criminals stealing their money, but find a perverse enjoyment in their banal existence under the heel of the Jordan Belforts of the world? This one single shot is emblematic of just how complex The Wolf of Wall Street is. As a true totem of our culture of excess, the film defies easy answers. This format is a bit of a test for us, so let us know what you think in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Peace. So, there it is. Hope you guys enjoyed that. We've got a whole bunch of pilots on the slate this year. This is just one of them. We've got another one coming out in about a month. Also next month, we're doing the next in this series, which is on The Shining. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. This one was really special to us. Uh, as you know from watching our channel, we love movies. This was an opportunity for us to take our love for movies to the next step. So we wanted to leave you guys a little behind the scenes on how it was that we put this thing together and the big crew that it took to make this thing possible. So enjoy the behind the scenes and and we'll see you with the next one in about a month. Thanks, guys. Hey, what's up, guys? We're on the set of a new project. I'm wearing something I would never wear, but it's for the shoot. This is behind the scenes, so hope you guys enjoy. We're doing this very interesting thing about putting Jerry into the movies. Today we're working on The Shining and The Wolf of Wall Street. Jared and I were uh, brainstorming on how we can come up with something that had a little more production value, right? So to take the idea of a video essay where we're talking about uh, theme typically or philosophy in movies and now instead it's like how can we talk more about technique and style and do it in a way that's different from most other video essays you find on the internet. Thanks a lot to Rode Microphones and Digital Sputnik for supporting us. Your donation and your help and your support uh, means everything to us. Without you guys it wouldn't be possible for us to try and continue to develop Wisecrack to uh, continue to stretch the brand and try and make it into something uh, more and more special. And uh, for all of you that support us on this journey to try to make it the best it can be, thank you so much and hopefully you guys enjoy our new efforts.